Admissions. This is Alain Essay, and I'm joined today by Dr. Alex Flory, our Director of Education. Uh, Alex, thank you so much for joining me. Great to be here. Alex, we're doing case-based learning number 18. We just did the case-based learning number 17, which was on a molar um, endosequence case. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we had a lot of feedback, and it was it was great. And I wanted to do one more case using the endosequence. Okay. Uh, this time we're going to do a premolar. And, of course, when it comes to endosequence, Alex, you've been using it for uh, over a decade. Uh, 12 you have years. Plenty of experience. <laughs> You've done hundreds yeah. and hundreds of uh, lectures and presentations and hands on uh, courses on this topic. And you're quite the expert, world expert <laughs> on this topic. So I wanted to share with you one of the cases I had done uh, with a premolar and just kind of have you also uh, share your experiences with this uh, file and the technique uh, with our audience. Okay. But just as a, a basic review first, I think uh, the end of sequence concept is fairly straightforward. Right. Yes. All we're trying to do is to get a master file from our set of procedural packs down to the apex, and then that master file is matched with a, uh, a pre-fitted, if you will, or a matching size paper point and got approach it that is right. biceramic coated, mm -hmm. and then we now have a fiber post that is matching that size preparation of the file, and, yeah, and there's a reinforced composite core to go along with that for mm -hmm. your core restoration. But uh, why don't you just walk along your experience with the basic endosequence technique and the way we triage the case uh, using this uh, file called the expediter? Yeah, sure. I mean, it's. I think it's very simple. Uh, like all cases, you, you bring a hand file to to the constriction and get patency, work uh, with your apex locator to get a nice uh, accurate uh, working length. And I typically would do that with the number 10 or, or mm -hmm. number 15 file. So that's step number one for any technique with yeah. any file. Having any a path rotary file. Yeah. to follow. Because uh, that's what the rotary files will do. They'll open up that uh, space. So right. you get that to length. And then uh, for the end of the sequence, uh, you start with a with an expediter file, which is the orange color, uh, non-ISO color file. It's a 0.27 millimeter at D1, so it's a 27 size uh, okay. file. Uh, and that works well to determine if you're, gonna, if you're dealing with a small, medium, or large canal. And that is how you decide to open this or that procedure package. So, so you triage uh, if, the case using the expediter. Exactly. And you know right. what else? It works really nice also as, a, as an orifice shaper. Yeah. I know it's not meant for that, but it does that job also. Yeah. So you determine if that's really tight, you're dealing with a small canal. If that thing is just wobbling around there, you're dealing with a large canal. It's pretty simple. So yeah. you open that procedure package, and you start, you start your uh, crown down preparation with the largest size and go to the smallest. Yeah. And then... Uh, uh, Gentle pressure, no, no rush. Uh, you, know, you use that rhythm uh, uh, technique going down uh, apically, and, and I mean, it goes very smooth. Yeah. It's yeah, uh, yeah, I mean, and you have three, uh, rather four procedural pa uh, packs of a small, medium, and large, and extra, extra large, large, depending yeah. on the case that you're using. Right. And then you've got four files per pack, and you use them in a crown down fashion. Exactly. Using the specific motion that was first described by Dr. Scotch and Bray, which was this rhythm motion, which was three right. strokes to engagement, and then removing the file, and then cleaning it. Exactly. Right? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's interesting. I remember asking them why three. Uh, Three strokes works well, and uh, the best answer I've ever got is that two was not enough and four was too much. <laughs> That's right. There's not a lot of science there, but but it works. It works really well. You go one, back a little bit, two, back a little bit, three, you cling the flutes and go back in yeah. smoothly. Remember, you're not really in a hurry or anything. It's just uh, you gotta you got to just go smooth. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, because of the fact that you have multiple files, mm -hmm. taking three strokes to engagement does torque each file a little bit, tiny bit more, absolutely. but it's not too much because each file is doing part of the work. With the ESX technique, which is one of the big distinguishing differences between the two, is because you have you use less files, it's very important not to torque the file. Therefore, in that technique, we recommend stroke. using this single stroke exactly. and clean so that the file doesn't get yeah. over torqued. So I think what we should do now is just use uh, a premolar to, to showcase this technique. Uh, we did the molar last time, and now I'm just going to do a premolar here. It's a case uh, that I did um, um, not uh, too long ago. And uh, it, it, it's a fairly straightforward case, a case that uh, 
pretty much every uh, person doing endo would be doing in their clinical mm -hmm. practice. It's uh, uh, the second premolar. I, I always try to decide what is the estimated length using the mm -hmm. radiograph. Here it's about 18 millimeters. That gives me a certain amount of guideline to go by. You can see here that the tooth has had uh, carries control, which has gone into the pulp, so it was irreversible pulpitis. I always flatten the cusp salix, and the reason I do that is so I can reduce the occlusion postoperatively as well as give myself stable reference points. I'm using the saber cut burr here from the Rewild Endo Access Kit to make a very, uh, uh, you know, kind of efficient outline form in an oval shape, which is ideal for these premolars. And then, I, as usual, I always use the ultrasonic with water to remove the debris that I have generated from the cutting. Now, we're going to use straight going to the expediter file um, and just see what kind of engagement we get here. Here, we decided that it's going to be a size medium pack based on the engagement. After I've gone into the tooth, now I do my additional and secondary isolation using Opal Dam. Uh, and now we start these, the cycle of, for the medium pack, it starts from a size 40. I have the estimated length in mind, so I know I'm not going to go deeper than that. Uh, so just a little bit of enlargement up on top with that size 40, and now it's time to get the working length. So I'm using a number 10 hand file to measure the working length. I always confirm with a radiograph because I also want to find out about the apical configuration as well as confirmation of my length. And here it's confirmed that it's actually our working length is 18 millimeters. So I've already done the 40, so now we're moving down in size on the procedural pack, and the 35 already reaches the apex here. So we have a uh, uh, 35 down to the apex, so we're going to move back up again to size 40. So size 40 reaches the apex too, but as you saw here in the flutes, there were some tissue uh, remaining. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up in size one more to 45, and again the three strokes. Now that it's reached the apex, I also do a little bit of uh, uh, you know uh, control, uh, the, just the wiping and uh, sweeping motion, buccolingually, and you saw that the debris there was clean debris left in the flute. So I think 45 would be adequate for this tooth. Now I'm using the ultrasonic and water once again to remove the gross debris that's been cut. Here's a higher magnification. You can see the oval shape of the canal and uh, it's been cleaned out. Now it's time for full disinfection. And I use the hypochlorite using uh, negative pressure with the endovac, and I run a high volume of hypochlorite all the way down to the apex in a safe way, that's at full strength. And then I, I take the matching size uh, cone, uh, the, ma the matching cone from the, uh, from the endo sequence system, and I measure it, it does go to full length. So I lock it in at that place, and I get the matching size endo sequence post. And I fit that, adjust the stopper so that I can get the length that it goes to, and it goes to 13 millimeters. So here, it's a very simple arithmetic here. So we got the cone going to 18 millimeter, the post goes to 13 millimeters, so five millimeter got a perch a tip that would be left at the, uh, at the end if I were to make a post preparation. Traditionally, we've been using heat, but this is a technique I described in 2006, which uh, uses a scalpel to cut about 90% through the got a perch a cone, um, kind of notch it exactly at that length at five millimeters from the apex, which is where the post should be going to. Now I put that aside and I use the master file, or I could use one size smaller uh, file, to take some BC sealer and place it all the way to full length. So it's important to make sure that you, um, you're completely going all the way down to the end of the root here and that your cone seats fully as well. So I apply the sealer once, you can do it a couple of times here because it's an oval canal, I'm doing it a couple of times. And uh, I'm using the dispensing tip from the BC sealer here as a reservoir where I can dip my uh, uh, both the file and the cone in. And here I'm just uh, dipping the tip of the, uh, the cone uh, into that bioceramic reservoir and now cementing it all the way down, making sure here, Alex, that I'm cementing the cone all the way to the full fitted position here of 18 millimeters. It's very critical to make sure if it's short, you got to take it out and redo it again. Um, and now all I did is just pressed epically and then uh, rotated the, the handle and it came off right at the point of the notch. So this way now I have a clean post preparation immediately at the time of my uh, uh, preparation and obturation. So now, as you know, the best way to remove the remaining BC sealer on the canal walls is to use the ultrasonic in water. Very quickly it comes off, like less than 10 seconds. It's important not to touch the gutta percha and only uh, keep the ultrasonic to the canal walls. And I dry out and I fit the, uh, the post that was pre-fitted and now it goes all the way to length. I've made my post space, I've done the endo, 
and it's all done. And uh, now here in Boston, we don't cement the posts uh, as endodontists or referring dentists that would like to do that. So what I end up doing is here's the post off x-ray. The um, uh, space has been prepared. As you can see, we've popped even a lateral canal here. It's prepared to a very nice apical diameter to a size 45 that's cleaned out very um, um, adequately and we've, uh, we've, we've filled it. Now what I tend to do is I usually uh, send the post back with the patient yeah, to the, to the, the general dentist yeah. who would uh, cement it and they love me for you it. You know it's funny, it's a, if you don't send that post back they can't resist, they'll grab a drill and try to make that space yeah. bigger, right? Exactly. And the beauty about this uh, in the sequence post is that it's stapled just like the file. Just like the so file. So there's no need to cut further dentin. You're doing Absolutely. a, a restorative uh, a procedure without having to cut any more, any further dentin. Now, that is the key. I mean, the best uh, post drill is actually your endodontic file. Yeah. And uh, here at this point, you have your space, you have the post, and all you do is you cement. And that completes this full circle of endo-restorative that we've been talking about, or restorative mm -hmm. endodontics, which is having minimally invasive preparations coronally, yeah. having good enough apical diameter here, as you saw. Yeah. But because of the O4 taper, we were not removing unnecessary mm -hmm. dentin up coronally mm -hmm. with these excessive tapers. And now you have a... Um, a, a, um, a a post uh, that will match that shape and you use your composite uh, mm -hmm. cements or so on, whatever you want, to cement it in and place your core immediately. And that is the uh, post system that matches the um, um, the files as well as the the reinforced composite core that comes in different shades and so on. So as you can see, it's you know the, the endo sequence system. It's versatile. You could do tough cases like uh, right. I showed in that CBL number seventeen, which was a molar case. Mm -hmm. But here on a premolar case, it allows you to it's use only simple. like a couple of uh, two three files and very uh, quickly get to an adequate size. Yes. And it, it really is the the system uh, that that creates the robustness of it. Now in your experience. Uh, um, because I know you also use the ESX mm -hmm. as well as the endo In my clinical practice, I found that for most of the anteriors and premolars, the ESX is is, uh, is enough. For the molars, the tougher molars, I end up still using the endo sequence because I need to use more files. What do you think about this, you know, single file techniques and so on? Do you think it's possible to do cases that you and I get as endodontists with a single file? I don't. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's not really. Uh, possible. It's interesting. I've, I've been watching these uh, single files, and I appreciate engineers trying to make it more simple for us. But the truth is that uh, your question is like in, in complex cases, curved canals, tight canals, uh, a single file does not really does not work. It's just not compatible with human anatomy. Right. Now, I've sat through courses where they teach a single file system. It's really not a single file because you need to work several hand files before you get to that one single file. Right. And, and even uh, they realize and that is not a single file. But again, I, I always, uh, I'm always watching uh, advances in, in, in engineering. I'd love to have a single file. But to answer your question, no, I think endo sequence is more ecumenic. It's more versatile, I think. Yeah, the versatility is the yeah. key, as that's what yeah. creates the robustness of it. Yeah. Um, so I think that's uh, that kind of sums it up for uh, for uh, CBL number 17. We're going to come back and do some more tutorials for you. But for the meantime, uh, for Rebuild Endo, I'm Ali Nisse. And Alex Fleury. And we hope you found this information helpful.